Hello and welcome back to Missing Time. Now, I did click forward, just one little text bit, we're only one page forward, we're fine. No different, welcome back. Actually, let me turn off my air conditioner, even though the audio should be fine even with it on, thanks to OBS's actual filters, but... Yeah, I had to put noise reduction, limiter, all that shit on it. Ah, oh, I meet up with Chihara at the entrance. She carries what seems to be the biggest bento box I've ever seen, but politely refuses when I offer to take it for her. <laughs> it's for later. I've also managed to turn down the audio. She says with a blinding smile. Shrugging at her mysteriousness, I continue forward. Oh, remember the two girls we bumped into yesterday? Uh, Miri and Shizuya, right? Ah, so it turns out Amiri is the head shrine maiden of this town. I was doing a bit of reading last night and apparently she's in charge of the shrine now. Isn't that impressive? Is that right? Isn't she a bit too young for that? I thought so too, but apparently girls can start their training at a very young age. Maybe she's really good at what she does. So that means she's like a priestess now? I think so? Not really familiar with the terms. Oh, yeah. Overseas for a while. Yeah, remembered. Uh, I remember your grandpa explaining to us when we went to the shrine as kids, but I didn't really understand it back then. <laughs> of course. Don't be mean now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Chuckling at her red face, I decide to divert the conversation before Chihara gets any more embarrassed. Do you think Ember managed to score more members? I don't know. She seemed so angry yesterday, I hope she didn't get into any trouble with the school. Speak of the devil. Yo! I go! Chiharu! We just got to the hallway when Ember pops around the corner. Hey, I swear to God, I thought my thing was still on. <laughs> How are we this morning? We're good. You? Ain't too bad. Hey, guys, getting along? <laughs> We're doing good. Everyone here's so nice. Are they now? Good to hear. Uh -uh. She shuffles her feet, suddenly looking uncertain. A tint of pink spreads across her cheeks and she refuses to look us in the eyes. This is definitely not the loud and confident ember from yesterday. Well, I would think since we're a fellow club members now, you guys might want to get to know each other a bit better. Uh, what do you think about lunch? <laughs> I made food. Why the hell not? That's a bit sudden, but I feel bad that Ember has gone through all this trouble and might have to eat alone. Since Char doesn't seem to be able to talk anytime soon, I take it upon myself to answer. Sure. Where do you want to meet up? Awesome! I always eat on the roof. Uh, school Terrace. Sounds good. What do you think, Char? Oh... Oh, I, uh, I've, uh, I made plans, and I, uh, excuse me! To my bewilderment, and Ember's too, Chiharu takes off running like she's being chased by a ghost. <laughs> Strange girl, huh? You're telling me, boss. You'll be guilty now. She probably won't to spend lunch together, hence the huge bento box. Asking her to lunch with Ember all of a sudden like that probably spooked her. She never has been the best with changes of plans, and her slow decision-making skills makes it even worse. Oh well, can't do anything but it now. I'll have to go find you harder later and see if she's okay. I make my way to the rooftop as soon as the bells ring. While it takes me a while to figure out how to get up there, it doesn't seem like a lot of students wander near the western stairway anyway. I wonder why Ember wants to have lunch here. Maybe he has a good chance to get to know her better. 
The view is breathtaking, though. Clear sky, unobstructed by trees. All noises fade into the background, buzzing like cicadas in summer. You can see just about every house in town from here, hidden under the great mountain shade. It really is a great place. <laughs> right? Come here to think sometimes. It's quiet, and not a lot of people wander up here, you know. It is very peaceful. Amber pushes a tear of her bento box towards me, mumbling a thank you or open with thanks. A beautiful arrangement of sashimi, rolled sweet eggs, and grilled meat is revealed. Even with my amateur eyes, I can see how delicate each cut is. How everything is shaped carefully and placed in a vibrant piece of work. There's a panda. The tuna slices are crushed with fine bonito flakes and spices. The sweet eggs are fried to perfection and the color unison inside out. There's even a hint of butter in there. Which is interesting. Oh, and the meat. Ember seemed so intimidating at first. Never thought she'd be capable of preparing something so beautiful. I'm glad I agreed to this lunch. I guess you can't judge a book by its cover. You're damn right you can't. Holding up a slice of honey glazed beef, I blink. It's good. What's the seasoning you used? Oh, she's definitely pink now. She punches me lightly on the shoulder. <laughs> Don't even try to butter me up. Hey! It sounds good! We should pack quite a bunch, no pun intended. Freshness, texture of the food, it brings it all out. <laughs> Eating the slice of meat. I don't marinate food for a long time because I like my food fresh, you know. Marinating the meat for one to two hours would dissipate the meat's natural flavors. And for me, it downgrades the quality of the meat. But I love all food with complex scents. It's like a puzzle. Figure out which kind of herb and spices are used in a dish, you know. You really are passionate about this. <laughs> it's not like it's anything big. What do you even know about you know, soft and mushy when it comes to food? Sensitive, isn't she? But it really is good. Shush your mouth! Okay. Suddenly, Ember throws an arm around my neck and squeezes. Wheezing, I struggle, legs kicking and hands slapping her arm. Only a freeze when I feel something soft against my face. Frozen. Do you yield? I open my mouth, but the words are stuck in the back of my throat. Ember's open blazer does little to hide how plush and full her chest is. It's also very difficult for me to not think about the fact that my entire face is between her chest. What do I even... How do you... Should I just sit here and feign ignorance? No? <laughs> Maybe the awkward silence finally got to her. Since she quickly pushes me away, blushing to the tip of her ruffled hair, I'm not faring any better. My entire skin feels like it's on fire, and my tongue feels like it's permanently stuck to the roof of my mouth. But it was kind of nice, though. Deciding, though, not to make her any more uncomfortable, I shift my attention back to the food. It's only then do I realize there's a glaring absence of vegetables. You don't seem to like veggies much, huh? I'm fine with that. Never liked green stuff, even as a kid. Maybe fruits sometimes. Has to be juicy, like berries. She sounds like meat. Meat and fruit. <laughs> like, well, that's not good for your health. Shut up! You're me, Mango! You will like just meat and fruits. You will not eat the vegetables. Just meat and fruit. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a carnivore. I'm not saying that last part. Her impression with a clawed hand is adorable. So you say, I'd like to see it before I judge that. I quickly find myself laughing along, however. It was a lot friendlier than I thought. Despite her hot and cold attitudes, she is still easy to get along with. We fall into a comfortable silence, working through the bento's delicious contents. But I can sense there's something on Ember's mind. It's just a matter of time before she springs the question. So... What brought you here for senior year? 
Must be tough transferring on the last year, no? <sighs> yep, there it is. It's only natural. New face, new questions, after all. My, uh, my grandpa passed away and left us a house. My parents decided to move, and here I am. That sucks, man. Would have hated it if I got kicked around like that. I wouldn't say it as being kicked around. I mean, it sucks, yeah, but I guess I'm just thankful I wasn't moved in the middle of the school year. That's uh, true. Did you and Jaharu know each other before this? <laughs> oh, yeah. We uh, actually used to live here when we were kids, but my family moved away when I was nine. Jaharu's parents do a lot of business overseas, so they decided to send her to a boarding school a few years after I moved. So you were both originally from here. Wow. Yeah, I didn't expect to see her again. I'm really glad, though, that she came back here for the last year. It is nice to see a familiar face. You really care about her, huh? Well, she was my best friend growing up. Even if our relationship isn't the same now, I'm still glad to be her friend. You sure you don't have a crush on her or something? Wait, what? N not asking because I want to know or anything. Uh, sorry, I mean... <clears throat> It's just guys don't seem to be attached to girls if they don't have some kind of uh, attraction. She has a rather skewed view on friendship. Uh, regardless, I feel a blush creeping on my cheeks. It's not every day if someone asks me if I have a crush on one of my best friends. Clearing my throat, I will. My embarrassment. Don. No. No. I don't have a crush on her. She's my friend. Of course I'd be attached to her, you know. Right. Sorry, I asked. It's, uh, it's fine. We sink into silence once more, this time a bit more awkward. Red still stains her cheeks, her grip on her chopsticks is knuckle white. Sighing, I decide to venture and break the discomfort between us. I don't think I've ever seen a ember around, even before I moved away. You, uh, new here, in a way? My adoptive parents are native to here. I'm a half-blood kid. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, veering uh, away from that topic for now. Yeah, we're not close enough to discuss that. You have a thing for mysteries, though, huh? Excuse me? I mean, you've been in this club for a while, right? And now the president... You must have at least a pension for this kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've always been obsessed with unsolved cases. It's thrilling. Do you study outside cases or just local ones? A little bit of everything, I guess. I like reading mystery novels, too. Crimes and that kind of stuff. On an unrelated level, I watched Motherless Brick Brooklyn. Motherless Brooklyn recently. It was long, it was good, it wasn't, like, perfect, it wasn't amazing, but it was good. Uh, but that was kind of, that's just what that reminded me of. Well, look at her. Isn't she just full of surprises? Turns out to be a much more interesting person than I actually thought. We chat idly about everything until the bell rings. It is nice to get to know her, and even though this is the first time we sit down and talk in length, I hope I can tentatively call, tentatively Call her my friend. Despite her strange attitudes and unique way of viewing the world, I can tell she has a kind soul. We part ways with her saying our first club meeting will be after class. Oh, before I head off to the meeting, I managed to get a hold of Shizuyo. We end up fetching a meeting together who doesn't seem all that happy about it, but goes along anyways. Amiri stands by the door, even though she shows no emotion, it is pretty clear that she doesn't want to be here. If Ember noticed that, she doesn't comment on it. Oh jeez, I suppose I should start with the club's history, huh? It was formed in the middle of last year when mysterious things started happening. Students and staff disappeared. Weeks later, they'd be announced dead or missing. The police have no explanation. Stopped investigating. 
The former club president blamed these events on supernatural causes, just because there's no evidence backing a more logical theory. Also, it's worth noting the victims all fell into the same age bracket from 15 to 25 years old. Oh, yeah, that would cause the room to fall into silence, with Charu's eyes widening and the slow rise of internal panic evident on her face. I'm no less shocked myself. What the hell? There wasn't any information on these cases when I researched about the town. Contrary to our dumbfounded reaction, Amiri seems annoyed. Uh. Why did you say this is an occult club? That's outright lying. Couldn't change the name. It's a poor representation of what we are, but school didn't allow me to change it. And they cut our budget as well. At least you should have explained the whole idea in general when she saw us yesterday. Is Ember that desperate to keep the club open? The only person who doesn't seem faced in the slightest is Shizuyo. Is this why you have issues recruiting people? Yeah, besides, after last year they forbade me from recruiting lower classmen. I made the cup because I'm a senior now. Sorry, should have explained things better. I uh, understand if y'all don't want to stay. Shiharu and I exchange a look. Emiri immediately straightens up and moves away, but Shizuyo grabs her by the elbow. The sisters proceed to engage in a hushed and rapid conversation. I don't need to hear them to know what it is about. Turning to Shiharu, I whisper, What do you want to do now? Uh... Oh, she doesn't seem too comfortable. It's Shiharu's idea to begin with. Makes sense if she's the one to decide. She glances between me and Ember chewing her lower lip. Well, she did say it was about some local cases. I just, I d didn't expect it to be a s string of cases. When she said mysteries, I didn't think it meant dead people. <laughs> Don't say that! It's, it's what it is, right? What bothers me is that there's something so serious as people going missing or murdered, and none of it was covered by the news. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Do my parents even know? If they do, why didn't they tell me at all? I mean, Charu obviously doesn't know, since she looks like she's about to have a panic attack. Maybe because I didn't dig deep enough. Then again, if something so serious as people going missing or murdered, why didn't the news cover it? I glance over to the Anishi twins, still deep in conversation. They must know something, right? Only I and Charu should be oblivious to this piece of information here. It's creepy, but... I kind of want to learn a bit more. What, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean, what do I mean? Don't you think it's a bit shady that we never heard of these incidents when they happened as early as last year? Oh, you're like a mouse. Yeah, she wants to leave this club. Kindness aside, she's a scaredy cat, if memory serves me right. I don't want to stick around. It's a definition of unnerving. We're just a bunch of kids. No telling what would happen if we take... I don't care! We are staying! I am interested now! Magic? Ha! Mystery? Dead cases? Yes. We are staying. Still, it wouldn't hurt to know what to stay away from now. Uh, Maybe you're right, but we have to be really careful. Yeah. On the other side of the room, the Anishi twins seem to have finished talking. Shizuyo, with one hand on Amiri's wrist, takes a deep breath. We've heard about the incidents, but weren't the deaths and disappearances ruled as stress-induced suicides? That's what they told the public, yeah. Was the club cred just for this? For the cases? Not to my knowledge, no. The club itself was created before the cases happened. Then the cases started and it became our main focus. And the school, they were okay with it until this year? Yeah, some of our previous members broke a few rules and got into trouble with some of the faculty members. They did not like that. Why hasn't the club been officially shut down then? They certainly did try, but we did a public protest last year and they didn't want to ruin the school's image. So here we are. <laughs> they almost got us shut down by not listing us in the club advertisement pamphlet, though. <laughs> so, uh, if we stay, would... What do we do, exactly? Nothing extreme, to be honest. Gotta be careful, you know. 
I don't want to get anyone into needless trouble. <laughs> Trouble's my middle name. No, it's not. What do you want us to do then? Investigate the cases? Since we're restarting the club, you should dig up on the old files. <laughs> Just get used to the gist of it, you know. I see, uh, one, two, three. We'll split up into two pairs with one person doing independent research. Sound good? There isn't any objective. Objection. Although Amiri still glares at the ground like she has personally offended her. Ember certainly turns to me. Suddenly turns to me. Since you're the only male member, why don't you pick your partner, Mango? Uh, I don't think I'd get anything done with Chiharu. Shizuyo seems like she'd be just teasing the entire time. Ember seems like it'd be the most relaxing go of things, and Amiri would not probably be interested. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I want to go with, like, Ember or Miri, but I'm gonna go with Shizuyo simply for the idea of it, I think. Uh, oh, f No, I imagine most people aren't gonna go with Amiri, maybe. I don't know. We'll go with Amiri. I glance over at Amiri. Chiharu said the Elder Onishi is the head shrine maiden priestess of this town. If the cases are indeed as mysterious as Ember said, then Amiri would probably be the most knowledgeable about all this. Maybe if I can improve her mood a little, she'd be willing to fill me in. I'll go with Amiri. Oh, that face! Alright, how about you girls? I'll, I'll help you out then, Ember, if you don't mind. Aww! I'll do this alone for now, I guess. But next time, someone gotta pair up with me, alright? If that's that, we're going to end off this episode here. Or actually, we'll go through this kind of walking bit with Chiharu. We walk home together after the meeting, and she seems relieved. You okay? I'm okay. T to be honest, I didn't really expect the club's theme to be so creepy. It is named Occult Research! Cthulhu shit, motherfucker! Really? It says right, right on the title, Occult Research. Come on! Yeah, but I was expecting something like reading into weird stories or something, not tangible stuff. Real cases? This is gonna give me nightmares! Too real for you. Oh no, this might be a terrible sign! You and I both joined. It's gonna be like those horror movies. The scary cases might come to life and haunt us both! Don't say things like that, okay? You're just teasing her now. I laugh, but she seems genuinely scared. Feeling bad now, I pat her on the back. It's okay, I was just kidding. No, I mean, what if something bad really happens? Oh, I'm, I'm living alone right now. What would I do with this? Something bad happened? Okay, okay. I like this. I will give each other spare keys just in case something happens. That is static. I seriously doubt anything would, but it seems to calm Jaharu down. Okay, I'll give you a spare key sometime this week or something. The rest of our journey home is quiet, even though I try to cheer her up. She seems really out of it. Typical Jaharu. She assures me it has nothing to do with my jokes, though I start to wonder if joining this club is really such a good idea after all. There we go, we'll end off here. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!